How many remember LRG? In the early 2000s, Lifted Research Group was one of the leading brands that saw urban fashion make the transition into what we today call streetwear. There was a time that they were all over the place, worn by some of the hottest rappers in the game and respected as a leader in the industry. But like many other brands from back then, LRG just ain't what she used to be. I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and this is the rise and fall of LRG. But before we get started, let me get the customary reminder for you to hit the like button out of the way. It helps us grow as a channel and gain more visibility in the YouTube search rank. So if you go ahead and smash the like button for us, it's a small act for you, but a huge favor for us. But now that that's out of the way, let's jump right in. LRG was started in 1999 by co-creators Jonas Bavakwa and Robert Wright. Bavakwa was a DJ who had previously designed prints earlier in his garage in Santa Ana, California, while Wright was an established face in the fashion industry, having worked with companies like Quicksilver, O'Neill, and Caton. The two found inspiration from brands like Nautica, Tommy Hilfiger, and Polo, who were kings in the urban fashion market in the late 90s. For some reason, these brands were crowned in the hip-hop community. My guess would be probably because they made higher-end pieces that could be found in ritzy department stores, and something about that made them aspirational for a community coming out of poverty. But those brands never really sought out to gain a following in the rap community, and in the case of Hilfiger, even avoided the connection publicly. Noticing this void, Bavakwa and Wright sought out to create a brand that truly represented the culture. Together, they created several samples, stickers, and patterns, and with a small amount of capital from friends of Bavakwa's father, LRG was born. The business started out modestly, making one seasonal look. LRG's first booth was at Action Sports Retail Expo in San Diego. By noon the first day, they had sold out 300 pairs of pants and four styles each of hoodies and t-shirts. Now you gotta remember, LRG was entering a world where each subculture at the time had its own clothing. For example, skateboarders and hip hop were catered to separately. Both founders were interested in clothing that reflected their own diverse interests. They continued to grind it out, and by 2002, LRG had bridged the gap and became profitable. By cultivating this grassroots movement, artists from the hip hop world began to take notice and the brand's recognition took off from there. When hip hop stars like Kanye West and Lupe Fiasco started to wear LRG, the brand was firmly established. Remember, this was the golden era of what was called backpack rap, and LRG represented a transformation in rap culture. Before then, rap had like a dress code, and there was really only one acceptable look if you wanted to call yourself a rapper. But when backpack rap came around, there was more example that you could just be yourself. And it was cool if you didn't sell drugs or if you wasn't a shooter. And along with this transformation in thinking came a different style of dress. Brands like LRG played an important role in outfitting the new movement. The brand began to expand and opened its headquarters in Irvine, California. Bavakwa became the face of the company as creative director. LRG had a mission statement, underground initiative, overground effective, and would give back by placing an emphasis on supporting underground artists. LRG released mixtapes for up-and-coming artists and really represented for the culture. They even created their own skate team. In 2005, the brand launched a women's line called Luxury, targeting women ages 18 to 30. Luxury's official Canadian and U.S. launch was 2006. That year, the company also partnered with T-Mobile to create a limited edition sidekick. <laughs> Anybody remember those? LRG's skeleton hoodie, or skull hoodie, debuted in 2007 and caused extreme hype. Some stores were even selling their markup as high as 250 bucks. 2007 was a great year for LRG as they would turn $150 million in sales. They also began to branch out their coverage and offer their stuff in large corporation stores like Macy's and Zoomies. But this wouldn't be a rise and fall video if all had continued to go well for the brand. Sadly, in 2011, Jonas passed away suddenly in his sleep at age 34. His passing really affected the company. Not only was he their co-founder, but he was also the creative director and visionary for LRG. It was also around this time that new and fresher brands had began to pop up. The streetwear game can be unforgiving, 
And just because you were the big man on campus a few years ago doesn't mean it's easy to stay at the top spot. LRG had began to lose footing, and a large part of their downfall was the oversaturation. As I said before, LRG could be found in all the large stores, and I'm sure they thought this was a good thing at first. Remember, they had originally drawn inspiration from brands like Nautica and Polo. These brands were sold in these big stores, and I'm sure the guys at LRG thought this to be an honor at the time. But streetwear consumers are strange creatures. We've touched on how extreme hype can help or hurt a brand, and in the case of LRG, it hurt. It was kind of a combination of the hype and over-proliferation that sort of burned customers out. Soon after, LRG, a brand that helped grandfather in streetwear, could be found in discount racks in the stores like Burlington Coat Factory. In 2017, Robert Wright sold the brand to Mad Engine, a global licensing wholesale company. The brand didn't completely die though. They're still producing drops today and recently teamed up with Ninth Wonder to release a collaboration NFT set. When we look back at LRG as a whole, they fell victim to the natural life cycle of many streetwear brands. They made a splash in the game and ushered in a new style of dress for an entire era, but they just didn't have the stand power to truly enter the ranks of those brands that inspired them all those years ago. But what do you think? You remember LRG? Hit us up in the comment section and let us know your fondest memories of the brand. And if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be updated every time we post a new edition of the Rise and Fall and Streetwear series. We do the new episode every week. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com signing out until next time. Peace.